Thank you. Thank you, Arav. And um, very, very good morning to all of you. It's really wonderful to be here and to see the complex. Um, well, for, for many of you, I would say that um, sport has been fantastic for me. And it never intended to be. My mother took me to the badminton court because, or she took me to the stadium because I was breaking window panes playing cricket. And she took me to the stadium to join for cricket. And somehow cricket admissions were full. And they said the next sport which we knew was tennis. This was way back in 85. So tennis, when we came out, my mother felt that there were too many cars parked outside. So she said, no, no, this is not the sport. We will go to another sport. And we picked up badminton because the courts were empty and nobody was playing. That is how the story was. So I am a firm believer that um, it's God's will or destiny that I'm here. And uh, I will just share a few of the thoughts which I have. I hope some of it will be helpful to you. Over the years, a lot of people have known or spoken about the victories I have had, the players I have produced, the championships I have won, the championship which my players have won. But truly and honestly, the story is filled with a lot of failures. A lot of the times when I've lost, a lot of the times when I have got injured, a lot of the times when my players have not made it. Today, in your biodata, in your CV, you talk about the things which you've achieved. were taken off and then I feel very allergic when I have air which is pollen air which is pollen or humid conditions so I played in Chennai in one of the junior nationals I had lot of cold I went next nationals was in Calcutta I would think that I am in Hyderabad, I come to Chennai and I feel my heart pumping hard and I think, no, no, it's pressure, tension. Back then only one tournament used to happen in a year, nationals. And then next year it happened in Calcutta. Calcutta was also humid, they the same problem. I was so sick I couldn't reach for the match on time and I was given a walkover. And then the third year the nationals were in Manipur. Luckily, I played there better. And the fourth and the fifth year, I learned from my mistakes. And in the last year of under 18, I won my first junior nationals, got a job in Tata Steel, and that is how I started to pursue my badminton career. So it is not... So when somebody tells me he... He won 91 junior nationals. Nobody knows that those five years I kept losing. But every time I lost, 
I came back and tried to win the next time. That is very, very important. To not give up is very important. Then I went on, everybody, Arav spoke about the All England 2001, which I won. But honestly, before that in 2000, I lost the Olympics. That was a bad loss. But nobody remembers that. I think it's important in our minds that the biggest losses are steps for the biggest wins. So you have to hang on more. It is very, very important. 1999, I won the Arjuna Award. He spoke about that. 94, I had the anterior cruciate ligament of my left knee torn. I had a whole knee surgery with about 30 stitches on my left knee in 94. It was at the national semi-finals. Then two years later, in 96, I had another fall. This time I went to Scotland to play the World Championships. I had another surgery. And two years later, when I was playing in Bombay, I had another fall. And this time I had another surgery. And this was 94, 96, 98. The 99 Arjuna Award didn't come suddenly. It came because I didn't give up. I think that is very important. So the losses are important. You have to learn from your losses. And you have to keep staying on. And that, I think, is very, very important. So all of you who feel that you're not playing well, you can't do better, I think it's very, very important that you have to learn from those mistakes and try to be better. This is one. The second thing which I will say is, till date, I've enjoyed the work. I never felt any pain while playing or boredom while playing. Somebody would say, come in the morning at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock. Any time in my career, I would say, yes, I want to play. I was having fun playing. So for all of us, sport has to be 80 to 90 percent fun. We have to enjoy it, first of all. And maybe 10 to 20 percent, we can say pride, hard work, determination, sacrifice, motivation, all of these things are maybe 10%. But every day if you have to do hard work, it's not possible. So I think you have to enjoy the sport. That's very important. You have to enjoy sport. So there are some people who are lucky. They get what they enjoy. Some people don't get what they enjoy. Whatever you get, you should enjoy. Whatever you get, you should enjoy. I went to play for cricket. I went to the stadium wanting to play cricket. They said, play tennis. I said, I was ready. They said, no, play badminton. I said, I'm ready. So I'm sure if they had said, play anything, I would have been ready. I think that was very important. So somewhere down the line, this is also important. If you have to study, you can either do it crying and not liking it or have a target and finish it well. It is better if you enjoy it. Like It's like food, right? All of us enjoy maybe an ice cream. And if you have to eat dal and vegetables and roti, you don't enjoy it. But if you go there and say, yehi khana khana hai, oh, this food is bad, bad, bad. Or you have a choice of saying, I love this food also. And then you start eating it. Then the whole perspective changes. Then you enjoy even things which everybody around is not enjoying. Then you start looking at good things even in bad things. The weather is rainy outside. You can say, yeah, oh, it's sticky outside, rainy outside. Or you can say, oh, lovely, I love the rain. 
I love the sun. I love the cold weather. Whatever it is, I love the way it is. I think accepting things that way is very critical. It is very important in us doing this journey long. Because if you have to become good at anything, you have to spend a lot of time doing the same thing. And you cannot be bored of it. Thousands and thousands of hours you will have to spend before you're good at it. So today I like enjoy badminton, tomorrow I like cricket, day after I like watching football, tomorrow, day after I like watching PUBG. If that is the way you're playing your life, then it will be very difficult to be good at anything. Or every time you lose, you want to run away from it, also it's not going to be good at everything. So it's very important that you stick to something and finish things. Especially what I have seen with players is players who take the difficult choices first are the ones who succeed. If you have a plate of food, there is maybe a bitter gout curry, karela. People don't like it, but they say, this is healthy, I will still eat it and finish this first. Or people who have a difficult training, they won't postpone it for tomorrow, but they say, I'll get it done now. Those are the ones who overcome the fear and who are most successful. So if you're afraid of something, if you don't like something, if you find something is a challenge, do it first, do it now, and do it and try to enjoy that also. I think that is very, very important. I hope all of you are with me on this. Yes? So there's one other thing I'll tell you, which I would say is, should be your attitude towards competing. Every day we f compete, right? Every day we are competing. We are playing one-on-one, -on -one, we are playing team versus team, a lot of things we do. In your mind, Even if you are down, in badminton, if I were to give an example, if you have lost the first game, second game, you are very close to losing. You are like almost 25 down. Everybody in the stadium knows that you are losing. But you should not believe that you are losing you should still think that I have to find a way in which I can win. Anybody and everybody, even your coach, your umpire, your opponent, everybody knows this guy is losing. Everybody in the stadium knows you're losing. But you should not lose hope. You should believe that you're going to win. That is very, very important. But there is a moment when you lose the match, right? When you lose the match, 21 is over, then the match is over, you've lost. Immediately, with a fraction of a second, you should believe and start working on this, that next time I'm going to win. And from this moment onwards, I will prepare myself and learn from these lessons and this loss is a stepping stone for my victory next time. And that journey is what you have to keep on doing. When everybody believes that you're losing, you should not believe that you're losing. But the moment you've lost, immediately turn it around. There has not to be a moment also 
where you're negative. Immediately you have to turn it around and say that next time I'm going to win and I'm going to work towards winning the next time. That is something which is very, very critical. So all of you should put this into practice. There is no chance for negativity. There's no chance for negativity. It's very, very important. The last... <laughs> One more thing which I have experienced in my life and I would really want to share this with you. All my life, I was competing against my opponents and thinking about them all the time. If I work harder than them, I will win. But then, few years after doing this, I realized that when you compete against yourself and try to be better than yourself yesterday, next session you are better than the previous session, you will become much better than anybody around. I think that is very important. And you will also have lot more friends when you stop competing against your own people. Just try to be your own best version. So get up in the morning and instead of saying, let the fellow next to me sleep, I will go and train on my own because he is my opponent, don't think that way. Or when you are running and there are three people along with you, don't think, that I should beat them. No problem, you should beat them. But you say, come on, let's all push together. When you're sitting for food and eating, encourage others along with you to eat good food. Encourage others along, so you'll have a lot more friends growing up. And in an environment where there's so many people, it is important that you have good friendships also so that your team is with you and I think that is very very important because you are going to stay here for a long time you have left your homes you have come here and you want to be happy and for that you have to have a good relationship with your parents your coaches your teachers your fellow players, your seniors, your juniors, everybody. And you have to make that environment good. So good relations are important. If you want to push everybody down, then it's impossible to have good relations. If you push everybody up and encourage everybody, you'll have great relationships. And relationships are important to be happy. I think this is something which I really want you all to ponder upon, think about it and act properly on these things. Now I have spoken about sport, okay. All of you need to listen a little more clearly because I think we will all have studies which are also very, very important. How many of you like to study? Put your hands up. Oh. That's nice. Nobody likes to study. So, I had, I had my, why do we play sport? 
and what do we get out of sport is also something important. There are few parents around and teachers around. So I will want to stress on this element as well. When the kid is going up, it is important that they think only upwards. They will not have a plan B. Neither should they have a plan B. They should think about success only. But I think as parents, as teachers, as leaders, as society, as managers, we have at the importance of the safety net. As an institution, we have to provide that safety net. So out of all of you, if you play a tournament, how many will win? One. So it is important that you're trying to be that one and you're pursuing it to be number one. But if you don't make it, it is not the end of life. So what do you learn in sport, which is very important? How many of you get up? What time do you get up? Many of our badminton team gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning, right? 5 in the morning. So we are getting up at 4.30 in the morning. Yes? So when we get up at 4.30 in the morning, and work on achieving anything, we will be good at anything we want to do. That is very, very important. That discipline which sports gives is very important for life. And whatever you do in life, you will be successful. Whether it's sport or after sport. Both of these things. Then the second thing is, when you play sport, you fall down, you lose, but again you have to compete. That is what sport teaches us. The ability to get up after losses. That is what sport teaches us. And as it is important that we all push that into that category. The third thing which sport teaches us, one is discipline, one is the ability to come out of failure. And you, many of you are playing team sport. If you don't pass to your partner, what happens? Next day, they're not going to take you in the team, right? It teaches us about teamwork. So in life, you always have your friends who are very important, your colleagues who are very important, for whom you have to take your help and achieve your goal. That is what sport teaches us. So these are big important lessons which we can learn out of sport. And whether you become the number one or not, you will still be much more successful in life than with anybody who doesn't have sporting background. So that is the reason why you have to play sport. So when you play sport, you have to be want to be number one and you have to be pushed to be number one. But you finish playing, start being happy with whatever you have and focus on anything, even if you don't like it, try and do it with some amount of interest so that you are able to pursue something which your teachers, parents and school wants because they are trying to provide you that safety net. Because as a coach, I would want you to be a great badminton player. All our coaches here want to be great badminton players. All your parents want you to be great badminton players. All the people who are here want, if you're a footballer, cricketer, tennis player, everybody wants you to be their best. But more importantly, 
all of us want you to be very successful and happy in life and sport is only 30 years of your life if you play till 30 there's another 50 60 years of life left so we want all of you to be successful in life not just in your sporting careers we don't want just champions who are not happy in life we want champions who are happy we want individuals who are strong people who can handle pressure and take care of anything and lose and come back and fight that is the quality of people we want you to produce here so the idea is to produce good sports persons champion sports persons but the goal is that we produce disciplined ethically strong morally strong hard working never will we fail and lose but we will fail and come back kind of people so that life is not a sprint it is a marathon and you have to take breaks recover learn your lessons and sprint again and again and again i think that attitude is what i really want each one of you to focus on maybe the younger kids don't enjoy don't understand what i'm saying very clearly but it's very important that we do this for all of you who can understand i'll give you one example if you grow a tree and i have a small farm if there is a mango tree or a guava tree or a pomegranate tree in the first one two three years they say pluck off all the flowers and the buds let their fruit not grow on a small plant because if you start plucking fruit out of a small plant then the plant never grows up and it never gives you many fruits whereas if you start plucking off if you start plucking off those buds when they are young when the tree goes bigger there is a lot more fruit so all of you remember that when you are young it is important that you should not enjoy you should think about acquiring more knowledge you should think about working hard and pushing yourself the enjoyment you postpone it for later the enjoyment you postpone it for as much as possible because when you do that then <coughs> there's a lot of time in your life then you can enjoy so people when they were many kids were more talented than me but they said we'll enjoy when they were young you miss the bus if you do that you'll never be able to grow and enjoy when you're older because you instead of spending time working hard when you're young wanted to enjoy when you're young so youth and your age is to push hard is to keep going and i think that's very very important the last word i would say is eat well try and eat 100% all the time what is sport people have asked whether it's eat sleep and practice which one we should do it should be 100% of all of it it's not about 50% training is important 50% food is important no 100% of practice 100% of sleep and 100% of nutrition 100% of thinking all of it is will make you the best version what you can be 
So each day you will make mistakes. Don't think too much negative about it. Next day, try to make sure that you don't make the same mistake. If you make, it's okay. Next day again, next day again. Life will give you many opportunities to correct yourself. So don't fall back into that habit and just try to be better from now on, from now on. Failure should not be make you low. You have to just move on. And I think that would be very, very important. So for all of you here, it's wonderful to see you all. And I wish you all the very, very best. And um, to all the coaches and the teachers and the staff who really worked hard, congratulations to putting this wonderful place up. And to Srini, I think uh, it's, it's been a great vision. And uh, I do believe that this thing is much, much needed for us. And I sh hope as ambassadors of this first group of batches, you'll all be great role models whom we'll all be very, very proud of. Thank you very much.